Hello, Diana. Hello, Ari. Welcome. Uh, such a pleasure to have you with me today to talk about your film, Where is Anne Frank? It's a lovely film. Thank you so much for sharing it with us and, and welcome Thank you. to Tiff. Thank you. And um, fortunately, I won't be attending with all the pandemic regulations and everything. And it's a blast for me because uh, from my experience, I think it's probably TIFF is one of the best free audience festivals on the planet. Really heartwarming for any filmmaker. So it's kind of sad to do it this way, but it is what it is. That's so no, that's so true. It's been a couple of years of challenging, uh, you know, for the yeah. film festival experience. I know, I know. You you showed your film in Cannes, and uh, yeah. yes, I, I mean, so it, at least at least the film festivals keep going, right? And we're going to be able to show it in ter in Toronto audiences yeah. to experience it. Yeah, Cannes was. I think this year Cannes was kind of crazy. I felt it was like a, they made it again like a religious experience, I think, because it was like with all the pandemic and everything, they had 2,600 people at the Palais Lumière, as if nothing happens, you know. It reminded me about the extreme religious people here at home at the, at the peak of the pandemic, going to schools as if nothing is happening during lockdowns. So um, it, I think it was uh, it was a can to remember. Yeah, that's that's what I've like heard. That. Yeah, I think. Well, these are going to be years we don't forget, Adi. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, <great>. yes. <laughs> but we get to we get to celebrate cinema and art and culture through festivals, and um, oh. I, I absolutely loved your film. Thanks. I loved the way you told the story, and I would love to chat. I mean, I know a lot of people will have seen it. They'll get to, to hear you talk about it afterwards. And I think, you know, what I I love how you told it from, from Kitty's point of view. I'm sure you, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons. I was very curious if you could tell us why you made that choice uh, to use well, Kitty. Well, I, you know, when I was offered by the Anne Frank Foundation in Basel, <clears throat> um, to adapt the diary and everything they have in their archives as a movie for children, I didn't want to take it because I thought everything was already told in the sense of the Anne Frank story. And it took me a while to understand um, why I'm taking it and how to do it. And I, I was digging into the original text for a long time, scrutinizing it, trying to figure out what am I looking for. And uh, I, I eventually I found this beautiful description of Kitty that we kept as it is. Um, and I thought, okay, this is a manual for me as a filmmaker, how to create Kitty in my movie, because she was, she had a exact description of her, uh, looks and face and smiles and everything and then about her personality i just needed a if to go to the lab which is for us the animation studio and create her it was there and i thought okay now that we created her in the studio she's gonna be the protagonist she's gonna be the the storyteller that's for sure and when when you were creating her and creating the story um did you did you have an audience of I mean of, of young people in in mind as well? Were you were you looking to speak to a younger generation? I had only young people in my mind, and uh, I had my three children growing up with the film. I, you know, this is a quest of eight years for me. And uh, when we flew to Cannes, my younger daughter is fourteen. She said, she, they all came to the screening. She said, look, Daddy, I don't remember life before I'm Frank because I was less than six. And this has been our entire life for her. And they grew up with the development of the film, first of the script, and they were very much involved in a lot of choices in the writing process and then in the casting process and in the design process and everything. 
So they were like my my test case all along. And it was the first time for me to really think deeply about the audience and every move I made in the making of the film and to think about young audience. And I was aiming, and I still am, the film for, I mean, girls since they mature earlier. From my experience, uh, I think this movie is, is good for 10-year-old girls and maybe 11-year-old boys. So yes, of course, I was thinking in every step and every move about the children who will will eventually going to see that. And, you know, the, the whole part of uh, writing the script, because I, I didn't know that this was offer, like, offered to you by the, the foundation. Yeah. And then that whole screen, like, I mean, it's such an original script. Um, I, you know, we talked about how you developed it through, through Kitty, but it also makes like a lot of, um, you know, of links to, to, to modern times, to the present yes. world, to life, you know, in Europe. Uh, can you talk a little, yeah, just tell us a little bit about that. I find it very interesting. I think, I think the, the Otto Frank legacy, Anne's father, was not just to teach about the past, and remember, but how does the past imply on the present? Mm -hmm. And I mean, this incredible person really, he, I mean, he lived very modest all his life. They were selling probably more than 70 million diaries and all his wealth and everything. It was, it was donated to organizations helping children in war zones. And uh, this, was, this was the lesson that had to be taught in their legacy and in his legacy. So not only, not only remembering the Holocaust, which is super important, and we're doing it in this movie, 40% of the movie is, you know, diving into the past in, 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 uh, in the original diary and the relationship between the two girls. But also, how does that, imply on what is going on in the world. And obviously uh, the making of the film was developing parallel to the, to the refugee crisis in Europe starting at the end of uh, 2015, then 2016. And we just started animating in 2018. Uh, before that it was animatic and preparations and everything. And I changed the script accordingly. And uh, of course, there's no comparison to from one genocide to what is happening today, but a lesson can be taught. So it was it was part of the idea of this film to do something which is innovative and fresh in 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 the terms of having Kitty as the protagonist of the Anne Frank story. I mean, Anne Frank's imaginary friend telling her story her own story, and then connecting it to the situation in Europe today. This yeah, was the challenge. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was wondering how you did bring that into, into the script, at what point that, that came in. Because um, it is, I mean, that's something that, you know, you see children right outside the Anne Frank house, and then, you know, this question, where is Anne Frank? And, and uh, you know, Anne Frank is, at, uh, is everywhere, and, like, you know, all, and it's such an yeah. interesting... Link. I think it, it was, it's more of a statement. I refused, although I was really pushed uh, into it, to put a question mark at the end of the title. Because I think in my, in my mind, when you say, where is Anne Frank with a question mark on, let's say, a cover of a book, uh, you will probably, it will click you, uh, three kids walking with a flashlight looking for Anne Frank under the carpet in the secret annex or something like that. And when you say, where is Anne Frank with a statement, it's okay, where is she now and her legacy and everything that she represents in the world today where 20 million children are on the run from war zones just last year. So it's, uh, for me, it was, it was more of a statement. Originally, the last act was completely different. Um, it was influenced by a story I read, um, pretty crazy. I never checked it, but I read it. Uh, that during the Bosnian War, during the crisis in Yugoslavia in mid in mid nineties, there was this Bosnian Anne Frank. This is how she called herself. It was first days of internet, and she was she was 
kind of posting her daily diary from the, the siege around Sarajevo. And one day, a helicopter landed near her house in a football stadium, and they took her to the airport, and from then they flew her to Paris, and they interviewed her in the studio, and they asked her at the end of the, of the interview what will happen to her, and she said, I'm going to die like my hero, my, like my idol, I'm front. They mm -hmm. said, okay, thank you very much. And they flew her back to Bosnia just to follow her diary. Now, look, I never checked, I never double-checked this story, but it was so amazing, and I thought, okay, this is the new, I mean, this was the new world already 25 years ago, more than 25 years ago. So the last act was like competition, um, kind of a kind of a reality show from participants were the girls from war zones all around the world trying to figure out who's going to be the next time Frank. And uh, it was, I think it was too harsh. It was always too much. I got this comment and it was right. And then <clears throat> the crisis started in Europe. So I, I changed the last act accordingly. Yeah. And you, you do uh, infuse at the same time, the story with some, some romance, like some young romance. And I was, yeah. I find that <laughs> like it, it does lighten it. Uh, is, is that why you, like, yeah. Look, why I mean, I mean, there is the 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 kind of romantic story between Anne Frank and Peter mm -hmm. um, Van Pless in the original in, in his original name in the annex that was as she says in the end of the diary and in the movie that it was only due to the fact that she was isolated and she had no other choices so he was the only one that she could feel comfort with so I thought. We need a parallel story with her imaginary friend as well. And uh, she falls in love basically with an activist in today's terms. He's an activist and he turns her into an activist as well. So I thought, okay, you know, unfortunately I know now that films cannot change the world, but if, 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 if a couple of teenagers would walk out of the cinema in Toronto or anywhere else and they, they, they will Google and and see how they can become activists because of my movie. I did it. I, I don't need more than that. No, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And you know, you there is like that element of mystery. Like, I I know what you mean. Like, if when you put where is Anne Frank with a question mark, but there is like that's Kitty's mystery. You do infuse that mystery into into the film as well. Well, Kitty's. When you think about it, Kitty existed in Anne's mind. I mean, mm -hmm. when she received the diary, she invented her, so she will have an imaginary friend, and the entire diary is written in the forms of letters to her imaginary friend, Kitty. But basically, Kitty is Anne Frank's alter ego. She is everything that Anne couldn't be, you know, while she was captive in the secret annex. Yeah. So I think... Uh, she, she's just building herself a parallel personality and a, that can walk out, can be more free, can be more vivid. Um, I think, and I had like to use it as a tool to move with it and be the, to the storyteller, but in general, it's an extension of Anne. And she talks about it through the movie. When, Kit, when Kitty says, I want to go out of here, it's not Kitty who, say, who says it, it's Anne who says it in, in the character or through the character of Kitty. And we get confused because she says, you can't get, you don't exist, you only exist in my mind, how can you get out of the secret annex? But it's not her talking, it's Anne Frank talking to herself. So it's, it's kind of a loop between the two girls. Well, basically one girl. Yeah, there's that continual loop between the girls, uh, between past and present. Uh, yeah. The animation is gorgeous. Thanks. And there is that, uh, you know, there is that that kind of vintagey look to it at times. Can you, yeah, can you talk a little bit about that, that as well? I'm really interested about how it looked. Uh, we were, you know, 
on the line between realistic designs and cartoonish designs, this film, uh, we went more to the non-realistic. If you look at the if you look at the character designs, Lena Guberman is the other actor of the movie. She's well, she's a genius. And um, um, usually, when you have a film that contains um, present time, contemporary time, and going back to the war and past time, you will have the war time either in black and white uh, or in monochrome, sepia coloring, and everything. But I checked it, and I, 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 I know from my parents that, you know, the Holocaust was not in black and white. They had colors. Yeah. And uh, I thought, okay, why don't we do it the other way around? Meaning Amsterdam today in the winter is going to be very monochromatic, and pastime, mm -hmm. which is in Anne's imagination, is going to be very vivid and saturated. So we turned this the other way around. Uh, so we get all wartime super vivid and then we have on top of it Anne's dreams and hallucinations that they are even more saturated and more lively in the movie so it kind of goes against everything you you're used to see from the combination of contemporary and period time movies uh, in a sense and it was a it was a tough production um, because we started in uh, five or six studios in Europe, uh, here in Jaffa in Jerusalem, and then in Luxembourg. Our main studio was in Brussels, uh, the Netherlands, and then due to the pandemic, we had to expand, and we went all over the all over the planet. Literally, we were in Australia, New Zealand. Martinique Island, Spain, Paris, even Toronto. We had a small group of designers, China. Maybe I forgot a few, like 14 countries just in the beginning of the pandemic. Slowly we were invading more, more and more space because a lot of studios were collapsing and we, every four animators who were unemployed, we found them on the planet and they start working. And then it sounds cool but it's not cool at all because then you have to work on making your film look as one movie. Yeah. And each studio has different methods, different way of design, and different quality. Let's let's be frank. And then we it took us months just to match everything to look the same. So it was it was a pretty insane production, and uh, COVID didn't help us a lot. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I remember when I saw the movie finish for the first time in Paris this April, I cried. I, it was very emotional. People thought I cried because the girls died, but I just cried because I couldn't believe that we finished it. You know, it was so, it was so tough. I, um, yes, it sounds like such a huge project, especially yeah. during the pandemic, but I really yeah. loved it. I, I'm so glad we're gonna sh get to show it here in Toronto. And I'm looking forward to the next, yeah, next time around having you back here in person, but it's- Yeah, I wish. I know, <laughs> it'll happen, it'll happen, all right. Yeah. Okay, but uh, it's gonna be, I mean, it's gonna be full house, the, the, yep. the cinemas and everything, yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah. We, well, you know what? It's, yeah, it's going to be it's just something so different. Uh, it, we, yeah, it's a totally different. We have drive-ins this year. Like we're doing ah, cinemas in the park wow. and in drive-ins. It's very exciting. Yeah. So everything's going to be in drive-ins? No, 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 no. We have cinemas, we have uh, outdoor venues and we have drive-ins. So it's like a, wow. A, yeah. It's an interesting okay. tip. It's something to yes, see. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Well, th thank you so much for thank you. Yeah. Thank you for thank your time. You. Thank you for like ch chatting with me about your film. It's really I very very pleased and honored that we get to show it at TIFF. Thank you so much. Bye bye.